you carry on your shoulders the hope of all humanity. For the first time in the history of international relations, the nations of the world have set up one common body to consider and when possible to rectify the economic and social problems that beset mankind. Welcome to Into the Vault, 75 years of UN audiovisual heritage, where you will have a chance to explore hidden treasures from the United Nations Audiovisual Library. This month, we will be exploring another of the UN's six main organs, the Economic and Social Council. The UN Charter established the Economic and Social Council in 1945 as one of the six main organs of the United Nations. The drafters, particularly of the Economic and Social Council, had a very big task to perform, but a task in which enthusiasm was the most prevalent feature. A task in which they realized that the hopes of world peace depended upon the manner in which the economic and social problems facing the world and of individual nations could be solved. ECOSOC, as the Council is commonly known, is the United Nations' central platform for fostering debate and innovative thinking. I believe that now, on the eve of a new millennium, it is time to break the silence. It is time for us to say here in Beijing, and for the world to hear, that it is no longer acceptable to discuss women's rights as separate from human rights. Forging consensus on ways forward, Mr. President, I agree with the Delegate of Canada that we do well to discuss these documents which are put uh, before us. And coordinating efforts to achieve internationally agreed upon goals. The Council is made up of 54 member states, elected by the General Assembly for three-year overlapping terms and distributed geographically to ensure equitable representation among regions. ECOSOC brings people and issues together to coordinate humanitarian action through the UN's Sustainable Development Goals, a blueprint to achieve a better and more sustainable future for all. The many subsidiary bodies overseen by ECOSOC include regional and functional commissions, such as the Economic Commission for Africa or the Commission on the Status of Women. Let us never forget that our charter proclaims the equal rights of men and women. As well as expert bodies, both governmental and personal, including the Permanent Forum on Indigenous Issues. Many of ECOSOC's specialized agencies may sound familiar. With over 1,000 locations across the globe, chances are that any traveler has visited a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The World Health Organization coordinates large-scale response to global health emergencies, while UNICEF provides humanitarian and developmental aid to children in over 190 countries and territories. ECOSOC has also created other entities such as UNAIDS, which has led, since 1996, the global response to HIV-AIDS, tuberculosis, and malaria illustrating the Council's ability to react to and address emerging issues and crises. It was the visionary Swedish architect Sven Markelius who best expressed the ongoing work of the Economic and Social Council through the design of the Council Chamber, leaving the ceiling over the public gallery unfinished, with exposed pipes and ducts creating a symbolic reminder of the importance of the structure and foundation behind the Economic and Social Council's never-ending work. Thanks for joining us. We hope you have enjoyed this glimpse into the vault and into the history of the United Nations. The Audiovisual Library's mission is to provide access to and preserve the audiovisual archives from over 75 years of the history of the organization. For more information and for access to more audiovisual heritage materials, visit us at www.unmultimedia.org. Stay tuned for more treasures from the vault.